I'm Tom C. Drogman. I'm Max Garris. Christian Sanji. I'm Ray Wilson. And our presentation is on propens and the factors that affect conductivity in the hydraulic and fractured wells. The main goal of propens is to maintain the integrity of the newly formed fracture. As you can see here, once the fluid pressure is released, the propen holds open the fracture and keeps it from closing. Well productivity ultimately depends upon the performance of the propen packet, which affects the conductivity of the fracture during production. Here you see our productivity index equation, which is directly related to our flow rate. Our main goal is to increase our flow rate, which then increases our productivity. The ideal propane is durable and resistant to stress, which maintains the original fracture geometry. It's also not susceptible to corrosion. It has a low density so it can be transported to the fracture easier. It's inexpensive and has a round shape to increase the porosity of the fracture. There are three main types of propens used today. The first is silica sand. It is a cheaper, lower quality sand used mainly for shallow, low pressure wells. The second two propens are resin coated propens and ceramic propens. These are more expensive and higher quality used for deeper, higher pressure wells. Each of these has its advantages and disadvantages and should be chosen based upon geology, availability, price, and government regulations. The ideal propane agent must be able to maintain enough conductivity to enhance performance after crushing, embedment, and overall damage. During the use of propens, we observe main changes. Here we see the difference between the reservoir permeability and the propane permeability. Propane permeability is much higher and results in a much greater inflow. This is the equation for conductivity, which is based on Darcy's law. Conductivity differs from permeability because it takes into account the fluid present in the matrix. Permeability is just concerned with the rock. Permeability, porosity, and viscosity all factor into calculating conductivity. The four factors affecting conductivity that we're going to go into detail are present here. Damage resulting from gel residue and fluid loss additives. The harmful effects of closure stress and embedding. The uneven distribution of propens within the fractures. And the role of digenesis in damaging propane performance. The first way in which conductivity is decreased is through damage to gel residue or fluid loss additives. Gel residue is commonly referred to as filter cakes and consists of the substances that are deposited on, on the fracture walls as fluid leaks off into the formation. In addition, fluid loss additives are substances that are used to maintain the volume of a slurry, which is a mixture of suspended solids and liquids. Gel residue has numerous impacts on fracture walls, including propane embedment, reduction of effective fracture width, and propane permeability damage due to buildup. As the fracture is closing, propens are embedded into the filter cake. This process causes gel residue to become deformed and displaced towards the middle of the propane package. The, the deformation and dispersion of the gel residue seriously deteriorates the propane permeability, in turn, decreasing conductivity. Conductivity is also decreased when there is a decrease in the effective fracture width. This decrease in width is due to the non-Darcy flow in the restricted pore space water blocking, and the swelling of clay. Propane permeability damage also has a major effect on the conductivity. Factors that greatly influence the thickness of the fluid cake and therefore the permeability include the particular stimulant fluid, pressure difference between the fracture and the reservoir, and formation characteristics. Like damage to gel residue, damage to fluid loss additives can prove, can prove just as detrimental to conductivity. Here we see a chart of the most common additives what their functions are, and what their typical products are. Additives are usually classified in two groups, water-soluble and water-insoluble. Water-soluble additives consist of natural and vinylenic-based polymers and cellulistics, whereas water-insoluble additives consist of polymer resins which produce permeability. Closure stress is the pressure trying to seal the fracture. It causes deformation and crushing to the propens in the fracture. It also leads to lower conductivity due to the shrinking 
of the fracture geometry. The Society of Petroleum Engineers published a study regarding conductivity and closure stress in 2012. The image to the left is a graphic showing the device used in the study to measure the conductivity of the core samples. The image on the right is a graphic showing the relationship of conductivity and closure stress on a Berea sample and a field sample with various concentrations of propens. As you can see, conductivity decreases across the board with increasing closure stress. Embedment occurs when a propent is embedded in the fracture wall. This causes a loss in conductivity due to the decreasing of the fracture width. It also varies with propent type and rock type. This is backed up by a study published in 2007 by the Journal of Petroleum Sciences and Engineering. The two graphs showing the effects of embedment on conductivity on two separate core samples are from this study. Propens do not embed in the steel patent, but they do embed in the core samples. So by looking at the difference between these two lines, one can easily see that embedment adversely affects conductivity. A major factor that affects the conductivity of a fracture is the distribution of propens. Ideally, fracking flow distributes the propens uniformly in the fractured shale, but usually propens are unevenly distributed due to a number of variables such as fluid viscosity, propen density, and fluid velocity. This causes the conductivity lower than expected and below optimal well performance. The plug and perf operation method is widely applied in hydraulic fracturing jobs, but achieving uniform distribution of propens in perforation clusters of each fracturing stage presents a challenge. Studies have shown that about 40% of perforation clusters were not contributing to shale gas recovery. Also, one-third of perforation clusters contribute to about two-thirds of total gas production, based on production logs from more than 100 horizontal shale wells from six shale basins. In each fracturing stage, propens are four times more likely to enter the last perforation cluster than the first, as you can see in the graph to the right. The figure above shows a representation of the three different scenarios used in our experiment we will be focused on today. The first scenario is a high uniform distribution, high concentration of propens. These are optimal field conditions. Your second scenario is non-uniform distribution. These are your realistic field conditions. Your third scenario is low conductivity, low concentration of propens. These are your very unwanted conditions. The graph below shows the production from each scenario over a 30 year span and illustrates the negative effects of non-uniform distribution on the productivity of a well. Another challenge with propane distribution is unevenly distributing the particles within each fracture due to particle settling of the propens and carrying properties of the stimulation fluids. The low viscosity fluids most commonly used during hydraulic fracturing is usually not adequate in effectively transporting propens and distributing them evenly. The propens settle into the fracture and can cause closure over the fracture over time and also a reduction in conductivity. These are your four distribution profiles we will be observing. As you can see in these graphs, propen settling is correlated to poor productivity of the well in the long run. The negative effects of uneven distribution are enhanced by higher formation permeability and drilling into higher layers of the formation. What is the diagenesis effect? It is caused by pressure solution and the compaction mechanism or stress. The propane particles are not crushed but instead broken down chemically. These high temperature and high pressure conditions in the reservoir are suitable to promote geochemical reactions that allow the filling of pore space. The diagenesis effect must be considered when choosing a propent for a given formation at reservoir temperature and stress. Crushing is not only the important factor, but overall integrity is extremely vital. How does the pressure solution and compaction mechanism work? The three processes of dissolution, diffusion, and precipitation, coupled with the associated change in geometry, are combined to define the progress of porosity with time. 
As you can see in the graphic, if we have two propane grains in contact and the force pushing on them together is increased at the small area of contact, the grains break down and eventually diffuse into the pore space and precipitate due to the absence of the force on them. The propane pack porosity generally decreases from approximately 30% to 8% or less because of the precipitation in the pore space and the loss of geometry we want for maximized porosity. Therefore, because of the digenesis effect, we see a loss of porosity and permeability. Propane filled hydraulic fractures with stress enhanced reactions can undergo a significant degree of digenesis type reactions within fractions of a year, as opposed to millennia with the case of rocks and geological time. These two graphs show how porosity is affected over time. We notice the slope in high temp reservoirs is extremely steep, causing the most damage to porosity. High pressure reservoirs have a slightly more gradual decline of porosity. In conclusion, these factors should be considered by engineers when predicting the productivity of a hydraulic fractured well. Extensive research is done daily with the intention of reaching the ideal program. As you can see here are our references.